G'day guys, with the new Arcs of Omen detachment being released, I thought what could be really fun is doing a video of my top five new meme lists that are going to be possibly viable with this new Arcs of Omen detachment. Obviously, we don't know things like points costs, we don't know a lot about what this new Arcs of Omen season is going to bring, but what we do know is this new detachment. So I wanted to talk about some really fun, really silly lists that are now potentially viable that wouldn't have been viable in the previous mission pack. So with that being said, let's just jump straight into the video. Look for the blood gun. Alright, this first list is called the Iron Demons. It's a, basically an Iron Warriors list that goes really hard on those heavy support slots and fills them out in a way that you previously could never have. And it's going to be really, really crazy the amount of damage that this can do, the durability of this by the Iron Warriors, and just the sheer silliness of being able to put this many Demon Engines on the table. So let's have a look at the list. Alrighty, so we've got an Iron Warriors Arcs of Omen Detachment. We have a HQ, Lord Discordant, Mark of Corn, Zal the Wrathful, and Hatred Incarnate. Then we have a second Lord Discordant, Uloka the Black, and Flames of Spite. So we've got two Lord Discordants that are absolute killers in combat. Then we have a third Lord Discordant with Unyielding Metal and the Gorget of Eternal Hate. He's an absolute pain in the ass to kill with that really tough, really good armor save. Really, really powerful. Then we're going with six heavy support slots, thanks to the Arcs of Omen detachment. We've got three Mauler Fiends with Magma Cutters, followed up by three Forge Fiends with full Ectoplasma. And then, once again, thanks to Arcs of Omen, we're able to get a Lord of War in there, where we're adding the Corn Lord of Skulls. Alright, this list is mighty spicy, so just imagine six Demon Engines on the table, all going full send, advancing at you, laying down heavy fire support on the way, protecting those Lord Discordants, each of which goes in and does massive damage in melee, and then on top of that, we have a Lord of Skulls who's sitting there. Now, Lord of Skulls in an Iron Warriors list can be absolutely insane because you can make them neg one to be wounded, you can make them neg one damage, they're toughness ace, they've got two up saves, they're really, really hard to put down, and they put out massive amounts of damage as well. You can't reroll to wound against anything in this whole army. The Lord Discordant is high toughness, he's got a feel no pain, he's got two up saves, so there's a really tough Lord Discordant in there as well as the two punchy ones. Those Mauler Fiends go in and they punch hard. The Ectoplasma Cannons being able to go up to damage three, really, really powerful, able to blast weapon into combat. There's so many crazy things that this list can do. I'm not necessarily saying that this is going to be a tournament winning list, but it's definitely something fun and silly that you can do with the new Arcs of Omen detachment. Alrighty, the next list I call the Fist of Corn. Now this is a World Eaters list. I know we've got a codex coming out probably roughly the same time as the Arcs of Omen, but for now I thought it'd be really fun to just see what the existing World Eaters could potentially look like in an Arcs of Omen detachment with a really powerful meme list. Alright, so in our HQ slot we have Khan the Betrayer himself. Then we've gone hard on the troops, thanks to Arcs of Omen. So we've got in there seven units of five Corn Berserkers. So we've got three squads with Plasma Pistols and then four squads with just the Icon. Then in our Elite slots, we have three Masters of Executions. The first one has Mark of Corn, Hatred Incarnate, and Gornet, uh, Gorget of Eternal Hate. Then we have one with Zal the Wrathful and Disciple of Corn. And then the last one has Violent Urgency for that plus one to charge and the Talisman of Burning Blood. And then in our two Lord of War slots that we're only able to access thanks to the Ark of Omen detachment, we have two Charybdis Assault Claws. All right, now this list is designed to be properly silly, right? So the idea here is you've got the two Charybdis Assault Claws, each of which has a transport capacity of 20. And then we have 35 Corn Berserkers, and four characters, which means we have less than 40 models, so we can load up those Charybdis Assault Claws and actually deploy nothing on the table. Because the Charybdis Assault Claw has a special rule, Drop Pot Assault, where basically it doesn't, it and any of its contents don't count towards the number of models that you have to have on the table. So they're completely separate, which means you don't have to have any models on the table because all of your models are in a situation where they don't count. So therefore, 50% of zero is still zero, so you can have nothing on the table, and then in your first turn, you can just go boom and drop down two, two Dread Claws and then throw out, uh, two Charybdis and throw out all of your units. 
all of the ones that drop within range of the violent urgency are going to get plus one to their charges. So they're going in for eight inch re-rollable charges from that deep strike. And you have a whole ton of units. So you're going to do lots and lots of rolls. The chances of you making it into combat with a lot of those units is really, really strong. Meanwhile, the crew just puts down a fair bit of shooting itself. It's got a lot of missile launches, so it does the fire support. Then you just bum rush your opponent. So if your opponent doesn't have the ability to get out there early and screen you, they're in a lot of trouble. So it's a really cool list. It's a meme list. There's certain lists out there that are going to absolutely embarrass this by stopping you from doing any actions, such as the infiltrators for space marines. You know, if you go up against somebody who's got a couple of units of those, you're in a lot of trouble. Uh, but it's a fun list, it's a silly list, and I think it would be a ton of fun. And you couldn't run this list before, but now thanks to Arcs of Omen, you can fit those two Charybdis in and still get all of your relics and fill out all those troop slots. So it's a really interesting list. I think it'd be a ton of fun and uh, it's definitely on brand for this channel. Alrighty, the next list I call Full Send and it's similar in the way that it's a big meme, it's a very silly list, but it's very oppressive and very powerful. So let's have a look at what the Red Corsairs can do in Arcs of Omen. Alright, nice and simple list. We have a Lord Discordant with Uloka the Black and Flames of Spite. Then in our fast attack slots, we have six Chaos Bikers, Mark of Corn, Icon, and the Black Mace. And then we have another six Bikers with the Mark of Corn and the Black Rune of Damnation. Then in our three mandatory slots, we're going to take Lords of War and we're going to take three Greater Brass Scorpions. All right, so the reason we call this list Full Send is pretty evident. It's basically Red Corsairs. So those two units of bikes are going to turn one, advance and charge. They're going to go 20 inches across the table and then charge something. And then those Brass Scorpions have a 3d6 charge. So they're going to be moving up their 12 inches, then charging 3d6. So with an advance on top of that, you're potentially moving 18 inches and then charging a further 18 inches. So this is just turn one, massive amounts of charges, getting across the table really, really fast, getting into combat early, and then just absolutely munching your opponent to pieces. So it's a silly list. It's not particularly powerful and I don't see it winning any tournaments, but those games when you get to go first and you get to make all those charges is going to be so satisfying and so much fun. So if you're looking to play around with the new Arcs of Omen detachment and you want an excuse to get your three Brass Scorpions out onto the tabletop, this could be a very, very fun way of doing it. Alrighty, the next list is taking a slight detour from this super aggressive massive power and it's going into something with the new ability to put as many units as you want in strategic reserves without spending any command points, which is a new thing for Arcs of Omen. I call this list the Subversionists, and let's have a look at what the Alpha Legion can bring to the table. Alrighty, for this list we have a Lord Discordant with the Lock of the Black and a Flames of Spite, and then we have a Demon Prince with the Mark of Nurgle, Wings, Golax the Decay, Decayed, and Master of Diversions. Then in our troop slots, we have 12 units of five legionaries. And then in our fast attack, we have two units of 10 warp talons. Alrighty, so this is a real simple spammy list, but I think this is gonna be really oppressive on the missions, thanks to the ability to put as many units as you want in strategic reserves, and also the Alpha Legion's ability to take units that are on the table and place them back into strategic reserves. Meaning you're gonna be able to just cycle through units, bring them on wherever you need them, do whatever you want with those units, really, really powerful. Further to this, those Warp Talons with the Master of Diversions means that you're gonna be able to redeploy them after your opponent's finished deployment. Then, in your first turn for a command point, you can pre-game move. So before the first turn starts, you can redeploy, then move. So I did a, an Alpha Legion Warp Talon Masterclass video, but basically I'm rolling that into here. And it means that you're almost always gonna be getting a turn one charge with those Warp Talons because they pre-game move 12, then they move 12 in your first turn. So you've already covered the gap. You're already practically in your opponent's deployment zone at the end of your movement phase. And then you're just charging things. So with a combination of those warp talons going in and doing that, distracting your opponent. Meanwhile, you've got a few legionnaires on the table protecting your demon prince and your disco lord who are moving up into the center. And then just an ocean of legionnaires that are coming on and holding objectives. They're flipping objectives. They're doing actions. They're raising banners. You know, they're objective secured so they're hopping on objectives denying your opponent primary points there's so many things that this list can do so many moving pieces that it's going to absolutely cluster fuck your opponent they're not going to know what hit them and it's going to be real fun and the fact that you can do this with as many units as you want in strategic reserves without having to spend any command points is just crazy
Alrighty, and then last but not least, we have probably one of the craziest lists. This list is absolutely taking the Arcs of Omen detachment and pushing it to the limits of excess, and that is the Party Bus, the Emperor's Children Party Bus. So let's get into this list and have a look at just how crazy Arcs of Omen armies can potentially become. So the Party Bus, it's Emperor's Children. Your first HQ is a Sorcerer with Marcus Slanesh. Your second HQ is a Chaos Lord, Marcus Slanesh, Thunderhammer, Power Fist, Flames of Spite, and the Rapacious. Then your third HQ is an Exalted Champion with Marcus Slanesh. Your fourth HQ, because in Arcs of Omen you can take four, is a Master of Possession with Marcus of Slanesh and Liber Hereticus. Then we have four troop slots, all of them being Noise Marines with Blast Masters, Power Fists, Chain Swords, and Icons. Then we have in our Elites, three Master of Executions. So we got one with the Mark of Slanesh, Hatred Incarnate, one with the Mark of Slanesh, Intoxicating Elixir, and one with just the Mark of Slanesh. And then to round the list out, we have a single Lord of War, thank you to Arcs of Omen, and that is a Chaos Mastodon. All right, so the crazy thing about this list is that it's a shit ton of characters, all of which go inside that Mastodon with all of your Noise Marines. So you can deploy just that one Mastodon on the table, and it is really hard to kill. This is a really, really tough, really, really heavy armored and lots and lots of wounds. This vehicle is a prick to kill. And you can basically in your first turn, move that up into the center of the table and then dare your opponent to come anywhere near it. Because the second they do, you're gonna be able to just go, okay, cool, you've come up with me near that. I'm gonna deploy one Master of Executions and a unit of Noise Marines out this side. They're gonna deal with that threat. Then out this side, two units of Noise Marines, they're gonna take that objective. And then up the guts, I'm going to send out, you know, the Chaos Lord with his Thunder Hammer and his Power Fist. So this is just a really silly list, but it's so fun because you can just fit an entire army in a single transport. And you've also got seven characters on the table. Each one is an absolute beat sticker in their own right. You know, you can use that Master of Possessions to add strength to characters if you want to send a character in and do more damage. You can use that Master of Possessions to put extra toughness on things or, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. Then you can use your Sorcerer to put Diabolical Strength on something to make him even tougher. So you can send in that Chaos Lord and absolutely just decimate anything that you want. Really, really powerful and he's so well protected in that vehicle. So this is just a really fun, silly way of going, how many characters can you shove into a list? And then what do you want to do with them? Well, you don't want them just running around getting shot. So let's put all of those characters together in one crazy, crazy transport that's got, I think it's got a transport capacity of 40, or it might be 30. I think a Thunderhawk is 40. Either way, they all fit, and it's just absolutely insanity. So these are just five picks of things that I think look really interesting with the new Arcs of Omen detachment. These are lists that previously you wouldn't have been able to run because you either don't have the detachment slots, you don't have the CP to put things in strategic reserves, or you don't have the CP to get all of the relics and things that you would want, you know? Previously, if you took three Lord of War, that was all six of your CP gone, which means no Wall of Trades for you, no relics for you, you know, your detachment potential is limited. Whereas now it's like, well, hang on, I can take two Lord of War, doesn't cost me any CP, and I can take a whole bunch of different HQs or a whole bunch of elites or whatever. So the flexibility in the Arcs of Omen detachment I think is really going to change the way the game is played and we're going to see some really interesting lists. I don't necessarily think any of these five lists that I've listed are going to win any tournaments. They're meme lists, which for me a meme list is something that just takes one part of the game and absolutely skews into it to the point where it's ridiculous. You know, it goes really silly. That's what these lists are and they're my favorite lists. They're always so much fun to play because sure, you're probably going to lose more games than you win. But you're going to laugh the whole time when you deploy that one vehicle with seven characters inside. You know, you're going to laugh your ass off on those games where you just get to drop in the two Charybdis Assault Claws and just charge everything across the table. So much fun. Even though you're probably going to lose, it's a ton of fun. So I think with the new Arcs of Omen Detachment, since we don't know everything, there's no point trying to theorycraft on hyper-competitive lists, but it's a ton of fun to theorycraft on meme lists. So let me know in the comments below what kind of meme lists and what kind of silly armies you think are going to be viable with the Arcs of Omen detachment.
Warhammer community suffers from some of the most prohibitively expensive essentials in the world, especially Australian content creators. Every single day, Dean wants to create content, but he can't. Suffering from old, worn-out brushes, expensive model kits, and costly software and equipment, he can't endure much longer. Just look at this dirty paint water. Would you drink this? Would you let your child? Even a small monthly donation can help provide Dean with clean paint water, basic tools for survival, and access to life-saving information and education. So please, follow the links in the description below and find out how you can sponsor a mad cunt like Dean today and end the suffering. Suffering that is cruel, unsustainable, and your fault. Do your objective markers ever get lost behind terrain or other models and become difficult to see? Do they ever get bumped and accidentally moved during a game? And do they ever spark arguments about distances? Well, not anymore. Introducing the blog for the blood god, not even remotely patented, neoprene objective markers. Made from the same material as astronaut suits, or maybe military equipment, or probably neither of those things, this two millimeter thick neoprene synthetic rubber is tear resistant, water resistant, and is designed to last. But that's not all. The blog for the blood god, not even remotely patented, neoprene objective markers come in a variety of different designs and styles to suit any faction represented in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. These objective markers are a perfect gift for yourself or a friend and are a perfect way to flex and show your opponent that not only are you a smarter, cooler, and better 40k player than them, but you also have more disposable income than they do. For the low price of $25, you'll get not one, not two, but six neoprene objective markers, perfectly designed for 9th edition Warhammer 40k. But wait, there's more. For a limited time only, People who sign up on Patreon to support Blog for the Blood God as a Skull Champion tier $5 per month member will gain access to a custom design service where I will design a unique logo to support their gaming club like the one I did to the left here for the Potato Farmers local gaming club here in Melbourne. Follow the links in the description of this video to pick up your set today.